See, when people think of the most famous works of art, they think of the Mona Lisa, Starry Night, Las Meninas. When people think of the most famous artist, they think of Leonardo da Vinci, Vincent van Gogh, Diego Velasquez, or American modernist Alfred H. Marr. But good art doesn't just come in the form of paintings, and good artists don't just come in the form of American modernist Alfred H. Marr. He revolutionized art. It's unlike anything I've ever seen in my three years at Amherst College. His work is sensuous, it's mysterious, it's profound. Chris, yeah, he's got a real problem. I'm Chris, and I'm the milkman. Milkshake man. Milkman. That doesn't make sense. Milkman. I met Chris my first day of college. He's an enigma without a doubt. He spends most of his day walking around the quad, smelling the flowers, sometimes eating the flowers. But he's also loyal. He refuses to leave my side. For the most part, he was an unremarkable kid. He grew up in Atlanta, played guitar in a band, and enjoyed board games and magic tricks. He didn't make a name for himself until November 3rd, 2021. What Chris did in those five and a half minutes between the time he left the table and the time he returned, nobody knows. Well, one person knows, Chris. The reactions were overwhelmingly positive. People emailed me, begging me to try his milkshake. I hadn't seen a response like that since Giada de Laurentiis deb debuted her Pineapple Semifredo in 2019. So I knew that whatever Chris had made, it was something special. Quite simply, the most delicious food to have come out of Val in my three years at Amherst College. The combination of flavors, sweet yet delicate. The intricate texture, rich yet airy. The detailed presentation, it was perfect. He quickly became a celebrity on campus. Everyone wanted to try one of his milkshakes. People would knock on our door asking for milkshakes and he would reach under the bed and pull one out. Then I would check under his bed when he was gone and there was nothing there. No ingredients, no freezer, no nothing. My milkshakes, they made my friends happy, which made me happy. And for the first time in my life, I was accepted. When Chris came to college, he wanted to become a guitarist. That was his thing. He would play at gigs, he'd make a name for himself, he'd maybe even make some friends. He auditioned for a band and he got in, but I don't know if they ever valued him. At least, that's how he perceived it. Uh, I think we should cover the song just like heaven. Are they here? Yeah. We're not doing just like Evan, Chris. S stop suggesting songs. <laughs> One, two, three. I suggested Just Like Heaven by The Cure. I suggested Close to Me by The Cure. And, uh, I also suggested Love Song by The Cure, but they didn't take any of my suggestions. When you talk to Chris, you get the sense that he felt slighted. Here you have a core member of the band, and he's suggesting songs, and the band dismissed him. Without fail. So for the first couple months of school, he was lost. I personally thought my ideas were good, but my band just flat out didn't like them. They said, oh Chris, you haven't taken a 300 level music course, or Chris, you don't know the circle of fifths, or Chris, all you want to do is just play music by The Cure. So if I didn't have the support of my band, whose support did I have? Nobody's. Until I started making milkshakes.
people loved his milkshakes. And more importantly, Chris loved that people loved his milkshakes. The milkshakes weren't just a delicious treat, if you were lucky enough to have him make one for you. The milkshakes represented joy. They were a symbol of a carefree and innocent childhood. And unlike American modernist Alfred H. Moore, there was nothing modernist about his milkshakes. They reflected a deconstruction of art. They made me question whether or not there exists an objective truth. You know, they deconstructed art, food, religion. They made me appreciate the nuances of subjectivity. They made me ask, what is a milkshake? Yeah, Chris is proud of them. It gave him a lot of social clout. He invited a girl over for the first time and they uh, read books and did homework right there at his desk. After the fallout with the band, it gave him a renewed sense of purpose. He became known as the Milkshake Man. Milkman. Milkman. For the first time in college, he knew who he was. It was a good time for me. You know, I started making chocolate milkshakes, caramel milkshakes. Uh, there was a coffee milkshake and even like a strawberry milkshake. But my best was the vanilla milkshake. It's perfection. I was riding a milkshake high for like two and a half months. At a certain point, though, people started asking questions. When the initial excitement surrounding the milkshake settled, people became curious as to how Chris made them, and for good reason. Not once did anyone see him prepare one of his milkshakes. He'd leave the table and return five and a half minutes later with a perfectly prepared milkshake. It wasn't a bad skepticism, not at all. If anything, the mystery of Chris's milkshakes helped him grow his brand. It created this intrigue that made the milkshakes all the more appealing. Every milkshake presented an exciting opportunity to figure out how they were made. Like I said, he's an enigma. That was his shtick, his identity. I don't think people would get excited about any other regular milkshake. People got excited because they were Chris's milkshakes. These milkshakes were a code that nobody could crack. No, no, wait, wait, wait. People made it their goal to uncover how Chris made his milkshakes. They would work through every conceivable possibility, and, and they would beg Chris to tell them, but he always refused. How do you make the milkshakes? Do you make them in Val? Yeah. And are they just ice cream and whipped cream? No, it's not. Why do you want to know? Why do I want to know? Jesus, Chris. People thought that Chris would eventually crack and share his recipe, but... They didn't realize that the milkshakes, and more importantly, the secrecy surrounding them, that's what defined Chris. And it's also what ruined him in the end. Eventually, the mystery of the milkshake lost its novelty. People realized that Chris was never going to reveal his secret. So they gave up trying to find out. They still liked Chris, and they still liked his milkshakes, but... But it wasn't the same. His milkshakes, I would argue, only got better with time. He refined his recipe until they were nothing short of masterpieces. And I think that's what was especially hard for Chris. You know, He was proud of the evolution of his milkshakes, and rightfully so. His friends, though, didn't seem to appreciate this. They lost interest. I noticed changes to Chris's behavior, to his mood. When he made milkshakes and when people reciprocated his excitement about the milkshakes, he radiated this energy wherever he went. But... When the milkshakes went back to being regular milkshakes, he lost his glow. It wasn't that people lost interest in the milkshakes. It was that people lost interest in me.
making milkshakes gave Chris a sense of purpose, so when people stopped caring about them, Chris felt directionless, like how he felt with his band. He felt that people didn't value him, that they didn't value his passions, that the people who once supported him had betrayed him. But what's so painful about this story is that this wasn't true. Yes, maybe the milkshakes didn't produce the same kind of reaction they did when he first started making them, but that didn't mean that people didn't care about Chris. He just couldn't see it that way, or he refused to see it that way. Chris was desperate for attention, for validation. When you think about it, it's not important whether people truly stopped caring about Chris, or whether that's just how he perceived it, or whether they just stopped caring about the milkshakes. The milkshakes were an extension of Chris, and he dedicated his time and his effort to perfecting this craft. So when he felt that people lost interest, he... Well, he felt disrespected. So, on March 3rd, 2022, four months after Chris made his first milkshake, he decided to reveal his recipe. 